Becoming a well worth sim racer is hard and there are tons of common mistakes that cost new players lap time and overall consistency. To ensure that this doesn't happen to you, I gathered the top 5 biggest beginner mistakes you should avoid in sim racing and how you easily can fix them. Welcome back to Overtake.gg, my name is Champion Joe and I'm a sim racing editor here on the platform. I have tons of playing hours on various racing sims and I wanted to help you guys avoid making the same mistakes others are making across all racing games. So let's get started with mistake number one and that's not using the whole track. When you're just getting started with sim racing, staying on track is usually the most important point for newcomers. As many players migrate from racing games like Need for Speed or Forza Horizon or similar titles where car control is not that really important like it is in a sim. That's why beginners tend to overdrive a car and when they start to adjust to the handling in the sim, they focus on staying on track first, which looks a bit like this. The car staying in the middle of everything for the most part. Which isn't a bad thing at all. After all, staying on track is much better than visiting the gravel pit every 30 seconds, right? But it's not particularly fast. You see, a race car usually follows the outside, inside, outside rule. Because the line, or rather the racing line you take through a corner will determine how much speed you can carry through that turn. Simplified, this means that you will use the whole track and hug the outside while braking, steer the car to the inside where the apex of the corner lies and when you accelerate out of the bend you aim for the outside again to maximize your exit speed. Sounds easy, but many players do that wrong initially and struggle to perfect this craft even with this knowledge. The perfect aid to visualize where your car should be is not the ideal line you can display, no, it is the curves. Every racetrack on the planet has them and they show you where you should place your outside tires to maximize your grip through every corner. So when you are learning a new track, take it slow at first and have a look at the curbs available and what story they tell you. How should the perfect racing line look like? Also don't be afraid to use all of the curbs available to you. Cut the chicane with two tires, let your car run wide on the curbing on the exit and test the limits of what's allowed and what counts as a track cut. And you will be surprised how much is actually legal to do in various racing sims. Another huge mistake you basically see in every racing game or in F1 when Verstappen is going for a dive again are players braking far too late for a corner. Yes, braking late will be faster into the corner, but it will most likely ruin your exit, leading to you crashing into an opponent or to your car becoming folded into a barrier. And this is where the famous sim racing saying comes into place, slow in, fast out. Which is of course a bit dramatic in its formulation, but in its core, it's the most essential racing tip you can get for bettering your corners and braking. But let's start from the beginning. When you are learning a new track and you have no clue where to brake, start to look at the side of the track to spot some markers that you can easily recognize while driving at a fast pace. This could be a tree, the start of the curbing, a line on the track or the meter boards that solely are there for exactly this purpose. Just don't take any shadows, trust me. Then start at roughly 200 meters for example and see how long it takes for your car to slow down before you have to turn in. Or if you are already way too fast and overshooting the corner. Usually you adjust your braking point from there until you are as close to the turn as possible without having to break a sweat when turning in. Keep in mind that your car should flow through the turn and that if you have a lot of movement in your steering that you have to correct you are most likely already a few meters too late on the brakes. Practice makes perfect here and when you feel comfortable with your braking and driving overall on track, maybe search for tutorials on trail braking next, as this will further lower your braking distance in the future. But that's more of an intermediate technique and too advanced for today. But if you would like to see a video from us about that topic, let us know in the comments down below. The third mistake I see often with newer drivers that start with sim racing is 
that they reject any kind of help from apps or programs whatsoever because they wanted to be as realistic as possible. But that's a big mistake, especially when you are playing on a 16x9 monitor and are lacking the overview that you would have in a real car. Of course, upgrading to an ultra wide monitor, VR goggles or triple screens can help you with that. But many of us don't have the money, which is why you should get all the help you can get from nifty programs. And there are many good ones out there. You should definitely consider getting a car radar. It shows you the cars around you, which will help dramatically to stay safe in side by side situations on track and to keep you cool under pressure. And there's even a program that can help you with your overview while also making you feel like you are still playing by the rules of the real world. This program is called Crew Chief, a free tool that will act as an engineer and spotter by radio. It can call you by your name, tell you when other cars are alongside you and also will respond to voice commands if you ask it something. For example, you are driving in an online race, you have all the hot elements turned off for the complete immersion and want to know what your position on track is, you can just ask. What's my position? B15. What an awesome tool. Everybody should use it. A link can be found, of course, in the video description. Mistake number four is a big one and treat it with a technique that real racing drivers have to learn as well to adjust to the speed and to the low reaction times. Because for many beginners in sim racing, their vision while driving is incorrect. Usually when driving a car in real life, for example when driving through a city, the vision of the driver sits right in front of the car. You observe everything that's happening right in front of you like traffic signs, construction sites, road markings or people crossing the street. Because your speed is lower, when you spot something you have to react to. Like when approaching a corner, you have more than enough time to react to it. In a racing scenario, this is different. Your speeds are way higher and the time you have to react accordingly is much lower. Which is why we have to adjust our vision to spot the next important point where your car should steer to. So when you're approaching a corner, your eyes should already focus on the apex coming up so you can react in just the right time to start turning your wheel towards it. And I know, what about the braking point? How can I spot the braking point and have my eyes on the apex at the same time? Easy, you have to use your peripheral vision. Spot your brake marker with the corner of your eye, focus on the apex and as soon as you arrive there, your eyes should already be focused on the exit ahead so you can take the ideal line out of the turn. This takes a while to practice and to get used to, but will better your lap times massively as well as your consistency. The best example I can give you are Eau Rouge and Radillon at Spa-Francorchamps, which are so much easier to master with this technique. Because the speed here is so high and the time to hit the perfect moment to start steering is so slim that every millisecond counts. So by having your eyes already on the inside, while driving down into a rouge makes it way easier to get out on the other side in one piece and to avoid cutting the track while doing so. Our last tip has to do with your attitude. What's your motivation to go racing? Only to win? Then get ready for a bumpy ride. Because compared to other esports titles out there, everybody on track is on their own and you are the only player in your team. Winning is always a 1 versus 20, 25 or even more situation. So if your only goal is to win every race, you will most likely get disappointed and lose interest in the hobby super quickly. My tip is to be your own rival and to find joy in the race craft. Because every race is also a competition against your past best. Try to maximize your pace when you are driving without anyone around alone in a race in P10 for example. Use the delta display to shave off tens each lap and to always be your best self, even though people around you might be way faster. Also learn to enjoy racing and not only overtaking, but also clean defending and long battles on track without contact with your opponent. If you start to value those situations, Online racing will become the best possible experience you can have. 
If the outcome of battles is not as important than the battle itself, you can fully savor the moment without being disappointed if you only come home 13th in the end of a race. Of course, I'm not saying that you shouldn't try to be the best guy on track. That's also a lot of fun. But it's not the only thing that makes racing exciting. So keep your heads up. Keep your fights as clean as possible at all times and just try to enjoy yourself. What are your tips you would pass down to a beginner? Let me know in the comments down below. But that's it already from me today. Thank you so much for tuning in and see you next time around. Cheers!